Ladies and gents, please join me in a warm New Jersey welcome to our guest artist, Sculptor Jesus Maroles. Thank you. I think. Can you hear me? Okay, it's, it's, it's on. Okay. Uh, could you turn the lights down uh, on me? Uh, and, uh, oh, uh, by the way, that uh, the video was, uh, was produced for third graders, so I'm glad you liked it. So. <laughs> um, and so that, that's why the, uh, I like pushing things around and uh, the Pharaoh and all that was kind of... Um, it was pushing things around, not people, so. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I have to say that I'm here because of my art teachers. I remember my art teachers' names from the first grade to, you know, up to now. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be uh, encouraged uh, the whole time uh, even from first grade on, and, uh, and, and in high school, and in elementary school, and having one-man shows in, in elementary school, uh, so, and uh, having uh, uh, 500 watercolors in the halls and selling all of them, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so, I quickly uh, I realized that wow, I, I could actually do this for maybe a living. So, uh, so I had a lot of encouragement, and most of all, uh, my parents didn't discourage me to doing art. They encouraged me, and that was a big plus, you know, because I, I do a lot of work with kids, and I see very talented kids, and, um, and they, they often, are, are, are told, well, I, but I have to make money and I'm going to be a scientist and I'm going to be this or that, you know, so uh, hopefully they'll see the light and come back, you know. Uh, so do I uh, need to just go forward or? Okay. The, uh, that was my first sculpture, a fountain, uh, and uh, there's some museum fountains. I'm going to quickly go through this. I have 300 slides. Uh, not really, but uh, 200. <laughs> uh, that's a piece in New York, uh, 64 tons across from the modern. And, uh, my, uh, my daughter was born uh, when I was up on the scaffolding in Atlanta, so I remember that. <laughs> I never hear the end of that. <laughs> well, she, she was three months pre uh, premature, so I wasn't quite expecting it. Uh, Texas Tech, 94 ton piece. Uh, so I work in a series, and so that, that last piece, uh, uh, it's like the one in New York, but you can walk through it, you know, so, and it's bigger than the one in New York. So they, they and this is also on the university, and it's, uh, you can walk through this 30 foot wide piece. This is uh, kind of interesting because it has a mirror polished stainless steel, and it, uh, it reflects the sky, so it brings the sky and the surroundings into the piece. So when the sun is setting or coming up, it'll, in the center of this will be yellow or orange and the background will be blue. And I just put uh, three of them up in front of the San Antonio Museum of Art on the river walk. Uh, This is a, a sculpture museum at the uh, Ulrich Museum. Uh, you can see before, they, they wanted me to put a sculpture in front of their museum, 
uh, they're known for their outdoor sculpture, and they said, just right here on the lawn, and they had $60,000, and, and, uh, and I said, but it's such an important place, you know, in front of your museum, uh, uh, you know, can I give you some other ideas? And, and they said, yes, but we only have $60,000, and I said, no problem. And so I came up with this uh, model and drawings for a three-level sculpture garden in front of their museum, and they went for it, and it was uh, $3 million. <laughs> uh, they still have their 60000 but <laughs> but I got the $3 million, so. But I turned, uh, you know, that place into a, 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 a sculpture, you know, so from the street you see this wall, uh, up above you have where uh, their front door, their stairs are behind that wall, and so, I just covered them up, they're still under there. So the front door, you had to go into the museum uh, and uh, on the side of that Miro. And I thought the front of the museum should be the Miro. So I changed the whole entrance of the museum. So, so the first entrance now is on the second floor. So they had to change the inside also. <laughs> so this is uh, looking at the courtyard from the inside. Uh, at the water wall and uh, a mid-level uh, uh, little plaza where they can put other sculptures and benches and, and there's a handicap ramp, which is the first thing that I look at in all my projects is how are the handicapped going to be here? Because I'm going to be there soon, so I want to be able to visit. <laughs> and I, I had this little handicap ramp wrapping around the end of the building uh, and they said there's not enough room for it. Well, there it is, right where I had it, you know? So, you know, I just, I just can't stand people saying, no, you can't do that. That's, that's, that's uh, you can't tell me that. <laughs> you know, that's the wrong thing to say. Um, let's see, this is a block of granite that was given to me. It fell off of a, a train and it was too heavy to pick up and put on a, on a semi and, um, and so, uh, you know what they say about um, you know when something's giving to you, you know? and so I had to go and actually drill it and split it so I could actually even get it onto uh, the trucks. And so uh, I show it. And this is now after I had split it. Uh, I really don't know what I'm doing with it. I, what I do is I just start working on it. And so this is somewhere in the middle of the process. I don't know what they're going to be, but. They're already started, you know. So they start on this journey, and I just keep doing things to them. And one day I'll, I'll say, "Well, looks like it's done. Turn it upside down and cut the top," you know. And we do a lot of um, performance art, uh, uh, granite musicals, and so I make these granite musical uh, instruments and rocking pieces. Six thousand. You saw that piece. The piece that tore off of that piece was uh, uh, 6,000 pounds. Uh, and so uh, here we are. Uh, I work with different schools. Wherever I go, I use the community to interact with my pieces. And so in the performance, I always tear a piece of granite for the performance. And so the audience all gets two pieces of granite, one a, a stone and an and actual little sculpture of mine. And during the performance, they play along. And when I'm tearing the piece, they're hitting their piece. And so when it splits open, they feel it because they've hit, they hit it at the same time and they get to keep their, their pieces. Um, this is the, uh, the Jocelyn Museum in Omaha. I used to uh, be stationed in, in the Air Force at uh, SAC headquarters there in Omaha. And so they asked me to come back to the museum and when they wanted me, they wanted me to do something in front of the museum, uh, I was touring the inside of the museum and I saw that Lewis and Clark had been down the river there at Omaha and they have the drawings of the river that they did when they came through. And so I, I wanted to, I decided to make the, uh, the front of the museum relate to what they had inside. So I took those drawings and made a river uh, scape and one thing I don't like is for fountains to be turned off in the wintertime. So I designed this fountain uh, up on the top. When it snows, it has hot water lines under the, under the river part, so there's never any snow on the river part, so it's a drawing in the snow. 
and you could walk down that path. And, and also, uh, like the rivers, you know, they overflow and they, you know, they, they, they go up and down. So the, the fountain is on a timer, so it drains and you can walk out there in the plaza and then 30 minutes later, all the fountains fill, up, fill it up and you can still walk around in the water or you can get out. <laughs> Here it is uh, with its full. And, and also I did a water wall at the back. Uh, these are broken earth columns. Also, if you notice, there is a high school, Central High, in the background. And I was kind of upset because the museum was kind of turning their back on the high school. And so I fought with them to do something with the back of that wall and actually do a fountain for the kids. And, uh, and I wasn't able to get that done, but I was able to get granite and all the and three high schools to come over and the kids to actually help me make this another granite wall on the other side as an art project with the, with the high school kids. It wasn't high school kids, it was elementary kids. So in all the openings, we always do performance art. And once the people saw the people performing, they got into, the kids got into it, and then everybody jumped in the pool. And, <laughs> and uh, here's the broken earth wall. And be, the other side is the one that faces the school. So here are the kids. First thing we did was took these big pieces of granite, and I gave them a sledgehammer and they broke the big slabs of granite. And then they, they picked out a piece from that and carved it and polished it and, and did things to it. And this is the wall we did on the other side. This is uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Sunken Garden uh, water wall. This is in uh, Seattle, uh, Bellevue. This is a model for University of Arkansas's law school. Uh, this is uh, what the space looked like, the school, and they wanted a, a, an upgrade, and they were going to enclose this courtyard. And, uh, and I said, well, the only thing I want to keep is that tree. So here's uh, on the left before, and then, uh, and then after. And I also did uh, three pieces on the front and the entrance going into the, into the, uh, the space. This is in the evening. And there's some fountains in there also. This is in, uh, uh, just across from the Washington Monument in Arlington. And uh, water comes out of that piece and uh, there's a bench, benches and, and then uh, some columns with water coming down them. This is that piece I talked about, uh, the police memorial. They didn't want a policeman holding a little kid's hand saying, we protect, and so they asked me to do something, and I thought about it for a long time, and, and I came up with this idea that I would, uh, that I would, I, wanted, I didn't want to bring anything to this place, I wanted to carve the place, so I acted like the Johnny Green Giant, and I stuck my hands into the ground, and what I pulled out of the ground, I, I made a mound, and so I wanted to go up on that mound, so I made the terraces, and then I, I wanted to go in these holes that I, that I dug, and so I made the terraces going down. And so that's where the design came from. Consequently, this is the only pyramid in the world that is actually rising out of the ground. All the other pyramids sit on top of the ground. So I think by, by pushing yourself, you come up with new ideas. Uh, and there's a fountain at the top with the officers' names. Um, it's a maze. You cannot go straight up. You have to go up and around and around and up and around. And so it's like life. You have to find your way. I envision it as a performing space, you know, for them to do performance. The police, they actually have a, a policeman, like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. They have uh, someone there day and night watching, uh, doing vigilance on, the, on, the, on that place. This just happened this year. They designed this coin, and, and it's uh, to promote uh, honor, integrity, and I can't read the other one, but, and respect for the public. 
And so I just want to show this, um, that an officer, if he doesn't have this coin in their pocket, they're out of uniform and can be fired. And so this is to promote and uh, 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 the, you know, to remind them of their, what their duty is. And also, it's, I think it's, it's nice that, that it's through art, you know, that art is the main focus of this thing. That And I work in a series, so that pyramid, you know, turned into a round pyramid. So this is at the San Antonio Museum. It's a lobby of a building in Oklahoma where they had some elevator shafts that had, were closed, and so I opened them up and made uh, a maze of uh, different ways you could go through the lobby. It's kind of like this jewelry box. Uh, and then up in the ceiling, you could look up in the ceiling, there were fountains up there. And this is also in Oklahoma. And uh, the polka dotted piece is uh, what penicillin looks like through a microscope. And you can see one on the bottom left, a mitosis, splitting of the cells. And uh, I actually am working there. Uh, <laughs> this is a weaving, a 30,000 pound weaving. Uh, I did one for, for China for the Olympics, uh, uh, this last Olympics in China. And I'm actually, uh, this is actually my uh, uh, a ring design that I'm working on right now uh, that um, is much smaller that you can wear on your finger. And it's a puzzle ring, so it actually act, does come apart. This is how we work. Um, you know, it looks like the saw does a lot of the things, but it, it's a lot of hand grinding to make all the lines look like they are just naturally flowing. And uh, so it's a lot of just hand uh, sanding. These are at the T-Bone Pickens Medical uh, Branch in, in Dallas, uh, University of Texas Medical Branch. And these uh, discs, six foot discs, turn in the wind. This is uh, uh, one of six shows I had in Dallas uh, at the same time at all the museums. This is at the Dallas Museum. And, uh, and that wall as the entrance was actually uh, a community wall that we did with passerbys and students from the uh, Arts Magnet School. And so they, we actually created that for the entrance of this show. And in the middle of the show is a prayer wheel. I had just gotten back from Tibet. And they have a prayer wheel, uh, the largest in the world over there, that's about this big around. And I came back, I said, I'm going to make a bigger one. And so, <laughs> but I made it so darn big, I couldn't turn it. So uh, it take, you know, with, with people's help, I could turn it. But we have to agree on which way we're going to turn it. And so it was the center of the show. Um, and in this show, Uh, you can see the, the hanging fabric to hide the lights, uh, kind of the colors of Tibet. And uh, you can see the little puzzle piece, the weavings, uh, kind of like Legos. Uh, I was passing through town and a guard came up to me and said, uh, this lady wants to tell you hi. And uh, this lady walked up and she said, uh, she was crying. She says, I have to thank you because uh, my son has some kind of severe um, attention deficit, where he couldn't do anything for, for more than a minute. And he said, he's been playing there for 10 minutes, making this tower. He had a, a whole tower that he had made. And uh, she was crying and saying, thank you. Um, but you can see there's a video playing on the wall. And there's musical rocking fish. And so you could go and play the, the fish. The column uh, over there is a musical column. And you can see my diamond blades that are symbols, so you could play along with a music video that was going on in the background. And also on the back wall uh, is a cutout in the wall and the height of kids. And we had thousands of little pieces, round cylinders and blocks where the kids can make their own sculptures in the wall. You know, they could make their own Machu Picchu or whatever. Uh, University of Wyoming asked me to bring a, big, a large piece to their campus, and, uh, and, uh, and I didn't really want to. 
Um, uh, and I said, I, what I want to do is I want to come out and find uh, some of your oil field um, throwaways um, at the dump and, you, and turn it into art and recycle uh, some material. So I took that tank and I cut it and I put uh, a granite and lined it in granite. And so you could uh, sit down and then you could lay down in there and look up through a window and then you could climb in there and sit where they are and then you could sit on top of that. So there are three levels of sitting down. And um, also it turns. This is a project uh, for a museum. Um, they wanted me to put something in the front of their museum, and I said, well, there's no space, you know. And so I, I said, why don't I do your wall, you know, because that's what everybody sees. You know, you have this concrete wall, you know, and uh, so I made a community project out of it. And so I took this wall, and uh, we got kids, and. Uh, and we lined it all with granite and carved it. And so we made uh, seats and, and now we're getting ready, we're getting another NEA grant uh, to continue. This we did about 80 feet. Now we're gonna do another 50 feet in front and then there's another, hopefully another project down the road. But uh, here they are. And so we lit it from the tree and, and it has uh, under the ledge lighting, lighting it down. Uh, I do a lot of granite workshops, and the, here we are splitting, uh, showing the students how to split the stone. Um, and work with a lot of kids. Here, these kids are elementary kids, and uh, we sat them down and they drew around each other's butts and uh, they, uh, they carved uh, this bench and polished it. And then it ended up in the city park. And so here they are. And it just promotes them to take care of their parks, you know, to be proud and to grow up and, and, and uh, be part of the community. Uh, I work with uh, Eric Johnson schools in Dallas and where I actually, you know, with little bitty kids and hold electric grinders and cut and carve pieces and then play on the musical pieces. And, and one thing about the Eric Johnson schools that I, when I was there, uh, all the kids came up and said hello to me and shook my hand. And it was the firmest handshake. There was not one of them that did not do a proper handshake. And all those kids are gonna be great. All those, they're gonna do good things. We had a lecture at night and, uh, and, and, uh, and I showed slides like this. Afterwards, the, um, the kids came up and they brought their, their nickels and quarters and bought books uh, for, you know, to take home. It was, it was just, it was crazy. As in that school, the parents have to play a part in the education process. They have to do something at the school. You know, they're, they're for underprivileged kids. And so they have a, a great record of success and, and the, those kids going on to college. Here's a project where we made little boxes where we made puzzles with the granite pieces that we carved off. So those actually went into these boxes and, but once you took them out, they only went in one way. You couldn't get them back in the other way, any other way. So you had to figure it out. Uh, here's a student. Uh, we give scholarships in Oklahoma to two students from a, a different school in the community and their art teacher. And so there's three in each class. And here is um, Julie Grice, who at the Ardmore, at um, Plainview, Plainview School, uh, won the first ever award that that school had won, and won, and the first time that a 3D award was given, and this is for the state competition, that, that, three, that, that 3D won first place in art. And uh, she's now off in college, and so here's her piece that she made in three and a half days uh, and polished. We, in the front of her school, we did a concrete foundation, and here are the pieces, uh, the two pieces with their teacher's piece. 
This is another school, much less privileged as the other one. And we hope to come back to this school and get uh, the beautification, uh, Ardmore beautification to come in and help me landscape around this piece. Um, and so, but there, the school is on the way up. Um, and so uh, it, it's, so you can see those pieces are about 11 feet tall, you know. This is another school, this is Ardmore High. And um, this, there's uh, the teacher, uh, the parents, and, and also the principal. And so, this is another student at a bench. This girl is an elementary school uh, girl. About, uh, she was about 14 years old, made a bench. Uh, I was visiting a friend. Uh, a new friend staying in his bungalow, and out the bungalow, I drew this picture of a of a piece I thought would look nice, and he said, "Okay, can you make it for me?" So I made it and I put it in my van, <laughs> and uh, uh, and and here I am. Uh, we're pulling it out of the van. It's, this is in Miami, <laughs> you know. So, uh, uh, and it's quite heavy, uh, and so that ended up being that. I, when I came back from, uh, from uh, apprenticing for Luis Jimenez for a year after graduating from college, I went to Italy for a year and worked in the quarries. And I came back and I got a studio in Waxahachie, Texas, and it's an old monument company where I, where I uh, worked for two years till I got some tools together to move down to where my parents had retired, where I live now in Rockport. And so, uh, I, my beginnings, my, uh, my first pieces all started in this place. Well, a church bought that place and tore it down, and the church invited me to come back to make something for this place, to commemorate the place where I was. And at the last minute, they moved the location, and I wasn't too happy about it because we already had decided on a location. And then I, I got to looking at pictures and, and, and the actual location ended up being where I used to sleep because I used to sleep in this old factory and uh, actually built a room in this old 150 year old fa uh, granite monument company. And so they moved it to exactly where, um, where I had built the shower and bathroom, which was for coloreds only. And I remember going into the office and and uh, when I would talk to the, 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 the owners, I, I, I didn't know if I could drink water from the water fountain because it said, I didn't know if I was white enough, it said for whites only. Um, and so uh, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, so anyway, I got to do this piece. And so X marks the spot and it's a church that's in this place now. And so uh, they're very happy to have this uh, there. This is Vail, Colorado, uh, outdoor plaza. Uh, LSU Museum um, uh, exhibition and chess pieces. And um, you know, this is the, the weaving I did for China. You know, I'm on the board of, um, of Texas Cultural Trust. Texas Cultural Trust. Uh, started um, uh, a endowment for giving money to the Houston Museum, to the ballet, to artists and musicians and dancers. And so we raised money for the arts. And this has actually picked up and, and it is actually a model for many places. And all the other states pretty much have adopted this kind of model from the beginning. First place was in Texas. But now one of the th things we're doing uh, with that is that we have started uh, working with the University of Texas, have started working and doing um, uh, art-based education, rewriting the art books and, and uh, art, the, art, the textbooks, so it's all art-based. And so we already have textbooks and they're, they're already out in schools and we're training the teachers and it's already um, uh, up to, I think, the the fifth grade, we're bringing a grade on it at a time as they're going up. And so it's uh, trying to uh, uh, promote the arts 
you know, because I believe that arts uh, can make a difference. This is in China by the Great Wall uh, in China. I just finished one of my largest projects in China, uh, this plaza, and uh, this is the model. Uh, here's uh, a 50-foot column. Uh, so I went to the quarry and picked out the stone. Uh, that's one of the pieces that they're, we're going to have to cut out. Uh, and just across the, from where we, I took that picture from the same place, these people were breaking the ice so they could wash their clothes. Um, and here we're having lunch. These are uh, silkworms. They're delicious. I had them like 10 different ways. Uh, most of the food, um, it has a, uh, if it's a Szechuan, which is really hot, is a, the side on the right side, the red. Chicken head. <laughs> right before lunch, right? So here's a plaza, and, and uh, I, I've been working in China for 20 years, um, and I eat everything ever put in front of me. And, uh, and I've never gotten sick, ever. Um, the, this is, uh, uh, I moved those trees over in that plaza. Uh, here it is under construction. Um, that's me up there. Uh, that's a 50-foot fountain. Now here it is completed with benches and the water running in Shanghai. Now this is one of the uh, 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 people that are taking my class and the lady didn't know what to do. It was some of the classes we have where the students uh, are all ladies and they're all over uh, 65 years old. And I, she didn't know what to do so I said, well just draw on, on the stone with, with the diamond blade. And so she started drawing and then she made this piece. Uh, you know, I work with kids in China and in India, all over. Um, this is a, 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 one of my recent shows, Rings of Granite. Uh, there's one of my, um, the table actually has carved out, uh, you could eat off the table, has the dishes already built in. I, I, I designed those, uh, the, uh, I actually did the, ta the uh, stemware and the, and the flatware and the plates and the napkins and, uh, and the chairs and the table and the drawings. Uh, this is a model for a fountain where glass actually holds the, the granite up and water runs inside of that and flows down uh, in the middle and you can see the water rising for a, this is in my uh, home. And I was uh, a board member of the Smithsonian in Washington, the National Museum of American Art. And uh, we reopened uh, with Sir Norman Foster covering the courtyard with a beautiful roof. And, uh, and uh, if you've never visited this museum, uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's uh, connected with the portrait gallery. And uh, uh, I'm actually having a show uh, coming up next month. Um, uh, and, and uh, be lecturing there. Uh, I'd like to have some questions if you have any, and uh, and and then I can maybe remember some of the other things I was going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you know, people uh, put pins in the things, you know, like this, and uh, our pins are like this big around, and the pins for that are 18,000 pounds, two of them. Uh, it takes a crane to pick them up. Yeah, they're, they're 22 feet long, and they go inside uh, each side of that, that piece. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, just a little pin like this, you can't pick it up. It's, it's uh, maybe 120, 50 pounds.
when, when, uh, I was, when I was uh, 11 years old, I was this tall. I've only gotten wider since then. <laughs> and my parents used to send me from Dallas, I grew up in Dallas, down to Rockport, where I live now, to work with my uncle, who was a master mason from Mexico. And he built hurricane-proof homes, hotels, uh, sea walls, anything to do with concrete. He was a master mason from Mexico. And so 11, 12, 13 years old, I was already, I felt like I could build anything. And, you know, there wasn't anything I couldn't do because I was already had been apprenticed, you know. And so I think that's why I ended up doing the granite because uh, right when I was finishing college, I took my first sculpture class and I got a B. And I went like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be bad at something. So I said, I gotta take it again. And then I found out the teacher had never given anybody ever an A. <laughs> and so anyway, so I, I got, uh, uh, wanted to try all the different kinds of sculpture. So I did wood carving and, and uh, bronze and, and uh, sheet metal and, and welding. And, and then I did stone carving, limestone and, and uh, serpentine and alabaster and, and then tried marble. And then I wanted to try granite. So I rented a trailer and went, I was at University of North Texas and, and north, uh, da, you know, north of Dallas. And the nearest quarries were in Oklahoma. So I went to Oklahoma, got a big piece of granite and I got my chisel and hammer, got it back and I hit it and my chisel broke in half. And so I had to use my GI Bill money to buy tools and granite tools. And I started working, you have to wear gloves and you have to wear uh, uh, goggles and, um, and earplugs and a mask and, a ha and, and you're like in a cocoon. And, and uh, I was working for about 30 minutes, I couldn't hold my arms up anymore, so I stopped and the dust settled and there were like 30 people surrounding me. And uh, the whole time I was just so involved with working with this piece, I, I didn't know these people were standing there just watching me. And that's when I first realized that, that the stone was pushing me instead of me pushing it. It had a control of me. It's still pushing me. You know, it's still winning, you know. I mean, my studio is so jam-packed up to the walls with pieces that are just, you know, 15,000 pound pieces that our crane is, is for three tons. That's 6,000 pounds. So these pieces are way overweight and they're up to the ceiling. I, I don't even have any room to move around, you know, so we're, we got so much work to do. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's because that early childhood of, of doing that, that hard work that, that everything else was easy for me, painting and jewel, metal smithing and, and uh, uh, ceramics. Uh, I worked with Peter uh, Bocas and, and Paul Solner, uh, built uh, kilns and, and I did a lot of different things, but when I got to that sculpture, it was like, so I, what I tell kids is that it's not always the, what you're really good at that maybe you should go and do, because for me, it was what I was, what challenged me. It was a, the only challenge, challenging thing that I, now I'm getting back to doing printmaking, the metal smithing, you know, doing the jewelry. Uh, I'm doing uh, a lot of other projects that, I, ceramics, I'm doing ceramic pieces things that I loved doing, but that were easier for me. So now, so, yes. Well, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed with the police. Um, I don't tell them that to their face, but uh, uh, but you know I, I designed it as a performance piece. For me, a, a a memorial that I want my memorials uh, to me are, uh, should be living memorials that you should celebrate life, and so for them to use it as a solemn thing all the time. Uh, they they think that we're going to have rock concerts or something. You know, you could have the symphony there. And so I, I think that, um, that I think they, they're stopping short, you know, of, of what, not realizing what potential they have to celebrate life instead of uh, the, what they're doing, you know, but um, I think uh, it, it takes time, I think. The performance, um, I'm, I'm not 
quite sure when I, but I've been doing it for quite a while. I, I always use the community uh, kids, uh, percussionists. Uh, I did a performance with uh, one time with a prayer wheel uh, and a one man show that I had with, uh, with a group, Suda Buddha from, uh, from uh, Austin. And, uh, and they, they're, uh, uh, they brought homemade instruments and they played along with my granite musical and it was like a Philip Glass musical. Uh, I collect um, art, you know, that's where my money goes. And so I have like uh, uh, Namjoon Pike, uh, uh, the father of video art, and a piece that has a monitor that has John Cage performing in front of the New York City Library doing his famous non-performance. And so, you know, I'm, and I was a commissioner of the Smithsonian, which we own more, more Namjoon Pikes than anybody, uh, the, the Smithsonian uh, National Museum of American Art. And, uh, and so uh, I think, I don't know, I, I, I think my wanting for the people to feel and, f uh, oh, I, I remember now, okay, the, when I was asked uh, to be, I uh, had a one-man show coming up, and the, my university wanted to come and do a reception to ask the, alu the alumni from Houston to come and, and uh, meet me and show, show me off. And I said, well, that's kind of crazy. I think, uh, wouldn't it be better if you showed the university off? And they said, yeah. Well, I said, well, why don't we, why don't I do a show where, where we can bring, because it's known as a music school, why don't we bring uh, the, the deans of music and they'll bring them down to my studio and uh, we'll get the uh, composer to compose a piece from, from uh, carving the stone and from playing the music. And then we could get uh, uh, the dean of music uh, um, who's a percussionist to play uh, live performance on it. And then we get the dance department to come and dance on my granite sculptures. And we get the media department uh, to come and do the lights and, and the smoke machines and which we had smoke and lightning and and it was called Thunder in the Stone, uh, uh, Tearing Granite. And, uh, and the composition was a pre-recorded uh, musical that the composer called Rompido, which means torn. Uh, he composed that, uh, Larry Austin, who worked, had also worked with John Cage. And, um, and so it was, it was a nice beginning um, uh, to do this performance. Well, we did the re rehearsal uh, with, uh, we brought kids from the school and we had them watch our pre-rehearsal, and then we did a, a, a thing at night for the, for the grown-up uh, collectors. And it was uh, quite successful. That was the first one. Since then, I've done it many, many different places, and it's always different because the pieces are different, the community's different, the space is different. And so, uh, and then I started adding, giving the, the community would come in and pick up their, you know, their, their, their little round stone and then their little sculpture. And so we show them how to get high and low uh, notes out of the stone. And so they get to keep these pieces. And, and people come up to me all the time and say, I have them on my mantle. And I remember that. You know, so it's, it makes an impression you know, with people. And, and the reason I did it was, one of them, was because when you go to dance performances, you know, you're, you're not necessarily looking at visual arts. You know, and when you go to visual arts, you're not seeing dance. And, and when you go to see, you know, so, so I wanted to marry the different uh, medias together. So. I, I was working on a big commission and I had a huge stone. It was a, almost as big as that, as that black curtain on that screen. It was about the size of the screen all the way down to the floor. I found this beautiful piece of granite and I already had an idea and I already had it sold actually. And, uh, but I usually don't find that big of a piece. And so I looked out my window and it was laying, it was covering my studio and I told him to move it and stand it up. And I looked out and it didn't look right. I ran out there, grabbed the controls, and it fell. Fell and it shattered into like 40 pieces. And so I told everybody, go back to work, you know, uh, you know, I gotta finish phone calls and everything. And I came back out and I looked at it and, um, 
And, and I got this idea, you know, and I saw this one corner where it was all broken into maybe 20 pieces. And so I took, it's only a, 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 about, I just installed it uh, uh, three days ago. It's at uh, Texas, um, Tulsa Community College, downtown Tulsa. And it's in front of the university, community college. And uh, it's about this wide and about this tall. And it's got about 20 pieces that had fallen and broken. And I took the pieces and I carved the, uh, polished them and burned them and did different things to them. And I came up with a whole new series called Broken Earth Series. Because, uh, you know, when things, uh, when the earth erodes and it cracks, it, 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 it still fits together, but it's broken. And then, and then the edges start to round off, and, and it's just beautiful, you know. And so I've seen that in nature. And so I, I was, you know, it's like nothing's ever really new. But because of that accident, you know, I came up, I've done a bunch of these things and sold them. None of them are anything like that one. They're all different, round, little, different colors, and uh, you know, and so, uh, but it started a whole new thing. To me, uh, an accident is just another direction, another possibility. If I wouldn't have known about that, you know, and it's uh, such a direct link with, with uh, nature, you know, I mean, it was, it was I, I would have ended up maybe there some other time, but it just hurried it up a little faster, <laughs> so. Uh, I, I don't really look at the things as a as a mistake, you know. I don't. I think that there, there you can, uh, uh, if you look, you know, it, it was probably for the best. And the first thing that I do when I'm working on a stone is I take off all the bad parts, you know, all the parts that are cracked or have chips or I don't want to have to look at those, you know. So I, you know, uh, and so you know. I don't want to like finish and then say, "Oh, I should have taken that off because you know it's got a crack here or something." You know, so thank you very much. <laughs>